We're here today to talk about challenges that incoming instructors may encounter in teaching international students in the classroom. All of us are familiar with those challenges. They're a part of our everyday teaching regimen. So all of us are instructors in the English language program at City University. I am Brenda Howald. I'm here with my colleagues. Hoying Douglas. And Gudrun Scheffler. And so today we're going to begin with Hong Ying, and she will start by telling us uh, some of the challenges she meets every day and specific strategies to deal with those. Um, I would like to talk about uh, two things. The first one is under, uh, expectations. Um, the second thing is um, how to deal with a quiet class. So understanding the uh, uh, expectations um, it's quite tricky because for a lot of the students um, who are from cultures that legal document is not important, uh, contract is not important, then they won't take the class syllabus, uh, class syllabus or the uh, schedule seriously because it's all about what the teacher told us and then I'm going to write down. The teacher will tell us what to do on the blackboard or the whiteboard and then we'll do whatever. Uh, yeah. We'll follow it that way. So sometimes, I, uh, a lot of times I notice students don't really understand what's on the syllabus and what are the major uh, projects that they need to complete in a, in a whole quarter. Mm -hmm. So I think one thing uh, that instructors can do is give them a quiz on the second time, uh, the second day they meet. The first day is all about, you know, hi, you know, um, greeting each other, get to know each other. But the second, second time they meet, give them a quiz. Meanwhile, give them a whole week or a couple of days to review. So on the, uh, on the test or on a quiz, uh, test them on what are the text materials, where can they find them. And also the major assignments and the major papers and also the deadlines they need to know. And also another thing is they need to get to know more about the Blackboard. For example, what kind of information they can find on the Blackboard, the basic things. Um, and also course uh, policy that includes attendance, participation, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. the percentage for attendance or, or also late assignment. And another thing is scholastic honesty. And I know Brenda will talk about that. But I think uh, at least on the quiz, um, the major thing should be covered. Uh, so that's, that's one thing I want to discuss. And then the second thing I want to talk about is the uh, participation. Um, a lot of the students, it, it depends upon which continent or which country the students are from, but normally we know the students from Far East tend to be quiet. And uh, uh, for the teachers from, uh, from North America, they may think the students are just too quiet. And for the students from Far East Asia, they're just being very polite. Uh, so sometimes the instructors you know, mm -hmm. share with me, say, do they get it? Do they understand? Do they hate me? Are they bored? Are they <laughs> sleeping? Or what's going on? <laughs> so I, 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 was a, I was an international student uh, in, in, in America. And it is really tri tricky. It took me a year to really start to participate. And also in business school, that was even trickier because I was the only woman sometimes or I was the only foreigner. And then in, surrounded by American classmates and I didn't realize Americans come from a very talky culture. <laughs> <laughs> so which is fine, but for me, it is just very hard. I don't know when to jump in, how to respond. And I also know the professor assigned points. So that's the currency for the students. So I need to get my points or get my money back or something. So I was sweating, I was nervous, and then I noticed Sometimes out of desperation, I just raise my hand <laughs> in grad school. I don't know. I need, I need my points. So I notice if the teachers assign, you know, give t students participation cards, that way I have to use my card maybe for the whole semester. I got five cards, five participation cards that I need to use. And that way I think can encourage or at least force the quiet students to talk. And also for the talky students, know that, that you only have this many chances <laughs> to talk. Uh, and oh, uh, awesome. you know, okay. that's just something I feel like hopefully that can help the students and they will become more talky or share opinions in class. So mm -hmm. that's it. Yeah. 
I love that idea of the participation card. Right, that's like a my great. Card. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that kind of, yeah, perfect. That's great. I've never used that, but it's something tangible that, just mm -hmm. like it did for you, it draws them into that process. Yeah, yeah. So like, I got to use this thing. I need <laughs> to spend it. It's a great idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I also really liked the very first thing you said about students from um, Asian cultures perhaps not having a respect for a legal do document yeah, academic so, contract. and or an academic yeah. contract mm. and that's really useful for us American ex instructors because we of course have all these contracts that are given yep. to us we take it deadly seriously yes. or you know we certainly take it yeah. seriously so that it's great for me to learn that yeah thank you yeah <laughs> So I'm going to talk about plagiarism, which is something that we all grapple with in varying degrees in the classroom. And often we hear from students that they have very different rules and cultural expectations around plagiarism in their countries compared to what we have here. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes this is true and sometimes it isn't. You will hear two students from the same country arguing about whether they're allowed to copy from the internet or not in their own country but we know they're not allowed to copy from the internet now. So there's a couple of strategies I've come up with to try and address this. And the first one that I use is early in the quarter, ideally the first week of class and ideally the first day of class, mm -hmm. I have students uh, write an original writing sample. So this can be around any topic that you want to choose, but it needs to be a, to a meaty enough topic that they can produce three to five paragraphs in an essay form. And I emphasize to them that this is what I call their naked writing, that they're not allowed to be in front of the computer, of course, and they're not allowed to get out their phone for any reason. So this is their actual writing skill in their second or third or fourth language. This becomes really useful when they start to produce more writing work for you, and you can compare the two. And if you're seeing a huge leap in, in um, proficiency and correct syntax and a voice over here that sounds like a Native American writer, mm -hmm. then you've got your original sample to help you approach them about the question of whether indeed they have copied something. Mm -hmm. And right. I think uh, instructors of any course content can do this original writing sample. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter what you're teaching. Mm -hmm. As long as they have to produce writing in your course, you should have an original sample yeah. of, of what their skills are. Mm -hmm. The other thing I try to do early in the quarter, first week if possible, is divide them into groups and present them with scenarios in which they have to decide whether uh, the action given in the scenario mm -hmm. constitutes plagiarism or not. This can be really subtle and tricky for them to learn. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not a straightforward, easy topic. Mm -hmm. The rules around it are not ironclad, and even instructors will vary in how they would respond yeah. to the exact same situation. Yeah, I would think that. So mm -hmm. it's, it's not easy for them to get an idea of, but uh, an example of a scenario that an, inst an instructor could create might be um, the student has to turn in a research paper online uh, by midnight. Mm -hmm. It is, in this scenario, 11 p.m. They have used five sources to create the paper. They have paraphrased everything they've taken. And they've worked really hard and long on this. And then they notice that they were supposed to have used six sources, not five. And they don't have much time left. Mm -hmm. And they think they certainly don't have time to paraphrase. So they go to the news source and they just lift a paragraph, just one paragraph, mm -hmm. that's all, and put it in their paper. All the rest of their paper is their work. Does this constitute plagiarism mm -hmm. or not? So I try to create four scenarios mm -hmm. and I divide them into four groups and they really get into this. They have a great time with this. They mm -hmm. argue with each other, they fight about mm -hmm. it, and it brings the questions up for the entire class to ponder and to figure out whether mm -hmm. this is allowed or not allowed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. It makes it very real. Yeah, yeah it makes it real. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Great. Yeah. 
Okay, I'm going to continue. I'm, I would like to talk a little bit about communication and especially the listening skills of our international students, which are, of course, lower than the ones of native speakers. Um, and so in my listening speaking classes, I always try to, of course, make them understand as much as possible. So when I introduce a new concept or I give some kind of lecture, it's a new topic, um, I identify keywords without which the students will, would not understand mm -hmm. the new concept. And um, this can also be done with a brainstorm, just assessing previous knowledge so that um, I can see how do they talk about this topic? Do they already have the necessary vocabulary or which words do I have to introduce? Um, and one specific um, stumbling block in this is often um, the concept of proper nouns, so names of places, names of people, names of businesses, yeah. uh, Starbucks. I mean, I think yeah. everybody knows uh, Starbucks probably and the pronunciation, but very often the students, like in my class, we just had a recent example, uh, Beethoven. You know, I mean, I am from Germany, so I, I, I also say it differently than an English speaker, but some of my students knew the person, but they pronounce the name completely yeah. differently. Yes. <laughs> and so in a sentence, they would maybe not understand the yeah. whole sentence because they miss the, 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 this name. Um, so I make sure that I put proper names on the board mm -hmm. um, and say, this is how you say it, or, or something like that. Um, so proper nouns are a big thing. And another very big challenge are cul cultural references. Um, so I was an international mm -hmm. student in the United States as well, and it was um, uh, sometimes during break even harder than during the during class when I just could not understand what my classmates were talking about because it was the references were American TV shows, American movies, um, music, any kind of cultural reference. Mm -hmm. um, maybe even TV shows that were already 20 years old. So I had no way of knowing mm -hmm. because I didn't grow up here. Uh, I had no way of knowing who that sure. was yeah. or what, what it was all about. Yeah. Uh, so I think it's very important as a teacher to, uh, of, of international students to understand that they will not understand cultural references. Right. They will not understand jokes, especially if they've only been here for a short time. Right. Um, of course, they have to uh, grow into that. They have yeah. to learn about culture. I did too, right? <laughs> um, but when, like in our classes, sometimes students have only been here for two weeks, yes. four weeks, yes. um, and I cannot expect that from them. Yes. So I, I have to keep this in mind. Right. Something came mm -hmm. to mind I'd never thought of before when you were talking about pronunciation problems and, and challenges, and though I try to minimize use of cell phones in the classroom, mm -hmm. one of, you know, one great thing they can do on their own when they're studying by themselves and don't um, have any way to hear the word correctly is they all have that pronunciation oh, app yeah, of in their phone. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and yet, and, and so I think it's great if we can encourage them to, hey, if you're home, you know you're going to stand up and say this word in class or you want to talk about this in class, but you really have no idea mm -hmm. how to pronounce it. This is a perfect time to use your phone and listen to that little mechanical voice tell you exactly how to pronounce it. Oh, absolutely, yes. You know, I, to uh, get that practice before right. you actually open your own mouth and try to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I sometimes even do it in class. I, I pull up, you know, they ask for a word. It's a very difficult word. I just put it into a, a Cambridge uh, student's dictionary. Right. I project it and I click the little yeah button and then they can hear it. Yeah. They can hear it from me, they can hear it from the dictionary, and they see the, the, the page and how they can do it themselves. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's very important. Um, I just want to comment on the uh, cultural reference. Um, you mentioned TV shows. Mm -hmm. I also, you know, living here for so many years I noticed longer words are easier because longer words don't have many meanings. The smaller ones, the slang, you know, yes. the pick up, pick this, pick that. Those, the, those little words, put up, put down, whatever. Those are the difficult ones. Mm. Phrasal verbs. Uh, phrasal verbs. And yep. I notice sometimes mm -hmm. professors like to be informal and friendly to the students, so decide to use slang and the idioms. Somehow, for the international students, you know, they, 
including me, sometimes I just you know, smile because I don't understand. It's so it difficult. It makes it harder. Yeah, yeah it yeah. is actually harder. Bigger mm -hmm. words are actually easier once they get it. It's gonna, <laughs> they're, 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 they're gonna know those words. But that the true, smaller ones are yeah, harder. Yeah. I think that truer yeah. academic vocabulary is is just uh, they can navigate that so yeah. much easier mm -hmm. than the idioms and the yeah. slang. Yeah. Absolutely, I, I think yeah. that's true in any language. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Yeah, I think we're going to wrap it up at this point, right? All right. Yeah. Sounds good. <laughs>